Foreign welcome back. Before we get into the stories, I need to give a trigger warning for story numbers one and four due to incidents of sexual harassment and assault. Additionally, there's a warning for story number six, which mentions the death of a child. If you prefer to avoid stories with such content, please be aware. Now, if any of you have a story you'd like to share, you can send it to southerncannibal.com. Without any further interruptions, let's dive into the stories. And always remember to stay hungry. My name is Rose, I'm a female, and at the time of this story, I was 18. I lived in Oregon and went on a vacation to Eureka, California with my dad and stepdad. On the first morning in the hotel, I told my father that I wanted to go to the buffet for breakfast. Neither my stepdad nor my dad wanted to join me, so I went by myself. I walked to the buffet, got my breakfast, and then proceeded to the tea and coffee area. That's when I noticed a strange man staring at me while I was pouring my drink. Shortly after, I decided to head back to my room, and I didn't think about the man again. However, once I got back to my hotel room, I realized that I had forgotten to grab a spoon for my yogurt. I went out of my room one last time to get the spoon, and then headed back to my room. That's when I noticed the same man was standing at the gym doorway, as my room was near the gym. As I went to turn around and put my key card in, I felt someone come up right behind me. When I turned around to see who it was, to my horror, it was the same man from before. I asked if he needed anything, because he was just standing there without saying a word. This is where the situation takes a really disgusting turn. As I looked at him, he pointed down to his private area and I saw that he had exposed himself, which horrified me. In shock, I quickly turned away and went to the hotel laundry room. Fortunately, there was a staff member there, and I immediately relayed the incident. Everything that had happened so far was deeply distressing. I was crying out of fear, as I'm actually a victim of sexual assault in the past. The woman who found me crying took me to the front desk, where they promptly called the police. When the police arrived, they asked me a few questions and reviewed the hallway footage. However, their response was far from comforting. One officer actually said to me, welcome to California. You should have kicked him in the balls or thrown your food at him. It was a disappointing and unhelpful response. I have no idea if they ever took any action against the man, and I don't know where he is now. I can only hope that he hasn't harmed any other women, and that he's facing consequences, perhaps even behind bars. This was an incredibly traumatic experience for me, and it triggered my PTSD, which is never a pleasant experience. Moving on to another incident, this took place during my senior year of high school on my 18th birthday. Needless to say, it wasn't a great way to celebrate. I was out late that night with my three friends, John, Tracy, and Zoe. We were at the casino, playing on the slot machines and enjoying everything the casino had to offer. After several hours of fun, we decided to head back to our hotel room at the casino. To save money, we all decided to share one room. John and I shared one bed, while Tracy and Zoe shared the other. At around 3.30 in the morning, we were all abruptly woken up by a loud pounding on our door. It was 3.30 a.m., and there was no way any of us were going to answer it. Then, the pounding happened again. Zoe got out of bed to check through the peephole and saw a man in his 40s wearing a bathrobe. She called out, what do you want, bro? It's 3.30 in the morning and we're trying to sleep. The man on the other side claimed, hey, it's housekeeping. I looked through the peephole myself and told him, we're fine, we don't need anything. 
I knew he wasn't a housekeeper, because he was wearing a robe, and I even pointed this out to him. Despite that, he insisted, let me inside, or I'm gonna break down the door. Tracy then went to the door and told the guy to leave, or she'd be calling the front desk. That's when the guy lost it. He claimed he had a gun and demanded to be let in, threatening to break down the door and shoot all of us. John stepped in and said, listen, if you don't get away from our room, I'm calling the police. But the guy didn't back down. He started kicking our door and screaming like a maniac. Tracy called the front desk and John called the police. Fortunately, the police arrived in about five minutes. We explained everything that had happened and the police informed us that the guy was wanted for being part of a break-in ring. The man who had tried to break into our room looked incredibly angry, like a demon from hell. The police arrested him and banned him from ever entering that casino or hotel again. We checked out later that morning and never returned there after that horrifying experience. Now, let me share another incident that occurred a couple of years ago when I was living in a hotel with my family. I remember my brother living in the same complex and he had some friends over. One of them greeted me with a hey and a random woman I had never met followed suit and said the same. Then she added, sorry, I just heard him say your name, so I figured I'd say hi too. It was a bit strange, but I didn't think much of it at the time. Some time passed and I was standing outside, trying to get some fresh air. That same lady approached me, attempting to strike up a conversation. I was taken aback that she still remembered my name and was trying to engage me in conversation. I kept my answers and responses short, but she just continued talking. Finally, she invited me to her apartment. When I declined, she said, oh, come on, big guy, it's not a big deal. Besides, I'm kind of lonely and want some company. This raised another red flag. Again, I declined her offer and she responded with, look, just come with me, okay? I could really use some company. This time, I wasn't so polite and I brushed her off, returning to my apartment. Looking back, I wonder why I reacted that way. Now, she knew what room I was in and unsurprisingly, she came back later, but this time she was clearly intoxicated. She began rambling about how I had blown her off, even though we had never made any plans in the first place. After more drunken complaints, she said, you can make it up to me by walking me to my room. I was already irritated with her, so I firmly told her no. She became furious and insisted that I owed it to her. I replied that I didn't even know where her room was and slammed the door in her face. From the other side, she began screaming, but I couldn't quite make out what she was saying. The next morning, I woke up and found her sleeping on the other bed in my room. I immediately called the front desk to report the situation. According to them, she was living with me and had supposedly lost her key. I argued that she did not live with me and that she was trespassing. Just as I was planning to handle the situation, my mom opened my door to see what was going on. The clerk realized their mistake and informed me that security was on the way. As I hung up, I watched my mom shoo the woman away, telling her to leave my room. The woman responded defiantly, I ain't going nowhere, lady. I reminded her that security was on the way but she just shrugged and stayed put on the bed, insisting that I still owed her and that I would pay her back whether I liked it or not. After a heated exchange between her and my mom, the security finally arrived. My mom opened the door and pointed to the intruder. 
However, she still refused to budge and even flipped off the security personnel. What ultimately made her leave was when the guard mentioned that if she didn't leave my room, the police would be notified. She went pale, and in a rush, she started begging. No, don't call the cops. I'm already on probation. I'm begging you. Don't call the cops on me. She left hurriedly and ran back to her own room. We removed the sheets from the bed she had slept in, and everything seemed to... Things had gone back to normal for the remainder of her stay. Though every time she saw me, she shot an icy glare in my direction, which I just rolled my eyes at. However, after some time, she ended up getting evicted, and I could hear all the screaming and commotion from the side of the complex where she was staying. Out of curiosity, I decided to take a peek, and I witnessed her physically fighting with one of the officers. When she saw me, she started running towards me, and I quickly retreated into my room. Needless to say, she ended up back in jail. I don't know the specifics of what she was on probation for, and it's none of my business, but I genuinely hope she got the help she desperately needed. I acknowledge that this might seem exaggerated, or that my memory might not be entirely accurate, but I've pieced together what I remember as best as I could. My memory tends to be a bit hazy, but this was an incredibly bizarre and frightening experience. The moral of the story is that the phrase stranger danger exists for a reason. Please be careful out there, people. Now, onto another incident from my past. I'm a male, and I was 13 years old when this happened. I'm 19 now, and it still gives me the creeps to this day. My older sister, who was 15 at the time, and my mom were with me. We were staying at a hotel while visiting relatives during the summer, when school wasn't in session. My sister and I went to the pool room with our four cousins to hang out while our moms went for a girl's night out. After about two hours in the pool, we showered in the designated area and dried off. My sister and cousins headed back to our room to hang out. While I told them I'd catch up with them, since I had something else I needed to do first. Later on, after we had all gotten dressed, I went to the vending machine to get snacks and sodas for all of us, using my allowance. As I stood under the snack machine, an older guy approached me from behind. He looked to be in his late twenties. He said to me, hey there, what are you doing? I told him I was just grabbing some snacks and sodas for me, my sister, and my cousins. He then asked, Hmm, do you think you can give me one as well? I left my wallet in my room, but I'll pay you back. I promise. I replied, I'd really like to, man, but I'm kind of on a budget. Sorry, what he said and did next. I got into a heated argument with my girlfriend. It was about her accusing me of staring at another girl's butt while we were shopping at the mall. I told her I wasn't and explained that I was just stretching my neck, but she wasn't buying it. Frustrated, I told her she could have the house to herself for the night as I decided to stay at a hotel. I packed my suitcase, got in my car, and drove to the hotel I had booked. Upon arriving at the hotel, I checked in and went up to my room on the third floor. The room had one of those doors with a view into the pool area on the other side. Since it was getting late, I decided to watch some TV for a while before heading to bed. After about three hours of watching TV, I turned it off and went to sleep. Around 1.30 in the morning, I was abruptly awakened at about 4.30 by knocking coming from the door with the view of the pool area. The curtains were drawn, so I couldn't see who it was. I turned on the table lamp and saw a shadowy figure standing outside that door. I then noticed the figure slowly raising its arm and I could make out a knife in the shadow. Without hesitation, 
I got out of bed, put on my shoes and hoodie, grabbed my phone, car keys, and room key, and left the room through the other door. I didn't have time to put on my pants, and I sprinted down three flights of stairs and out the front door. I jumped into my car and sped away. I didn't return to my own house because my girlfriend was there, so I just drove for miles. Driving back to the hotel, I returned to my room. To my relief, the lamp was still on, but the shadowy figure from earlier was gone. Nothing was broken or stolen, so I felt somewhat reassured. Thankfully, there was no one in the lobby or at the front desk when I left and returned to the hotel, given that I wasn't wearing pants. I stayed in my room for about two hours to relax, then got dressed and went down to the Continental breakfast. Unfortunately, I missed breakfast by about three hours, but I still managed to check out later that day. Before leaving, I informed the girl at the front desk about my unsettling experience around 4.30 in the morning. She reviewed the security cameras and confirmed there was a man in his 40s or 50s with unkempt hair and a long beard holding a steak knife. He stood at the door with a view of the pool room for about 10 minutes before leaving. Afterward, I returned home, sorted things out with my girlfriend, and shared my experience. Needless to say, I won't be staying at that hotel again. Seconds later, he came to my door and banged on it very hard, saying he was going to break the door in and shoot me if I didn't let him in. My heart was racing, and I was crying out of fear. I was so terrified that I ended up soiling myself. I'm not even kidding. I had to lay in my bed in my soiled pants until the all clear was given. Then the man moved on to another door and ended up breaking it in. I heard a woman screaming from that room, and it became apparent that the man had kidnapped a little girl from that same room. The woman was screaming for the man to bring her daughter back. Just then, I heard a loud voice yell, drop the gun and let the girl go. The cops are here. The police had arrived and they managed to arrest the man. The girl was reunited with her mother. Once the all clear was given, I went to the bathroom too. After freshening up and changing into clean clothes, I discarded my soiled clothes. I felt a great sense of relief that the man had been taken out of the building by the police. When the police investigated everything that happened, they discovered that when those two gunshots went off, the man with the gun had tragically shot and killed a 12-year-old boy. The man and woman who screamed afterward were the boy's parents. It's a heartbreaking and horrifying incident that still haunts me to this day. I can only hope that those parents have found some way to cope with their devastating loss, though I can't imagine the pain they must feel. I'm 27 years old now, and I still can't believe that these events took place. They are absolutely horrifying to think about. I genuinely hope that those two parents are finding some peace in their lives. To everyone reading these stories, I hope you found them engaging. If you ever want to share your own experiences, you can do so at southerncannibal.com. Have a good night, everyone, and remember to always stay vigilant. After freshening up and changing into clean clothes, I discarded my soiled clothes. I felt a great sense of relief that the man had been taken out of the building by the police. When the police investigated everything that happened, they discovered that when those two gunshots went off, the man with the gun had tragically shot and killed a 12-year-old boy. The man and woman who screamed afterward were the boy's parents. It's a heartbreaking and horrifying incident that still haunts me to this day. I can only hope that those parents have found some way to 
cope with their devastating loss, though I can't imagine the pain they must feel. I'm 27 years old now, and I still can't believe that these events took place. They are absolutely horrifying to think about. I genuinely hope that those two parents are finding some peace in their lives. To everyone reading these stories, I hope you found them engaging. If you ever want to share your own experiences, you can do so at southerncannibal.com. Have a good night, everyone. And remember to always stay vigilant. After that harrowing night, I couldn't shake off the chilling memories of what had transpired. It served as a stark reminder of the unpredictable and often terrifying nature of the world we live in. The incident left a lasting impact on me. A reminder to always be vigilant and appreciative of the safety and security in our lives. As time went on, I tried my best to move forward, but the events of that night continued to haunt me. I often found myself reflecting on the fragility of life and the importance of cherishing our loved ones. To those who have shared their own stories and to everyone reading, I hope that by recounting these experiences, we can raise awareness and foster a sense of caution and empathy in our interactions with others. Life is full of unexpected twists, and it's essential to look out for one another, especially in times of distress. As I close these stories, I want to thank you all for taking the time to listen and reflect. If you ever find yourself in a situation where you need help or support, remember that there are people and resources available. Together, we can make the world a safer and more compassionate place. Good night, everyone, and may your days ahead be filled with peace and understanding.